Some people have called this thing the dog man. Some people have even went as far as to even call it a werewolf. Me, I personally prefer to call it something more of like a humanoid canine. Now, I have grown to be quite fascinated with this particular creature because the sightings, uh, the reports, everything are on the rise. Uh, the details that people have about this particular creature don't differ too much about how it looks and everything. A lot of people have kept it to a certain look. And um, I have grown to be so fascinated with it of late that I wouldn't, even, I wouldn't mind to go look for this thing. I wouldn't mind to go out and look at the area. But I do sense a high level of danger with this particular creature. So if you decide to go with a camera crew and stuff like that, I would suggest that you... Uh, take something to protect yourself um, and if you do search for this thing and you are attacked if the thing's killing you at least make sure one of your camera crew gets it on camera because uh, you don't want your death to be in vain but anyway I was listening to uh, a Bigfoot live radio show and there's a particular clip on there that I wanted to share with you an uh, audio clip um, of this guy's uh, a guy's story that he wants to explain that he heard and um, I just want to share that with you. I'm putting the link up to the uh, site so people can traffic into this guy's radio show. And that's pretty much it. So I want y'all to enjoy that. But I also want you to know that I want to know what this damn thing is. So if anybody has any other opinions about this thing, just send me something or leave a comment. Peace and enjoy. Talented artist and uh, a superb woodsman. And uh, he and his friend uh, Bob Olson. Uh, have kind of set off on their own, doing their own thing up there, and they're doing some amazing things out there in Minnesota. And he uh, is gracious enough to come on tonight. He's going to share some of the stories about some of the stuff that's going on out there. So, uh, uh, Don, why don't you take it away and, and let us know what's happening out there in, in, in Minnesota, besides being cold. Okay. Uh, yeah, I've got uh, a couple of amazing stories here Uh one of the stories was ha was uh, an encounter and uh, in Staples, Minnesota. And this happened on July 23rd. It was on a Wednesday, uh, around nine or ten o'clock at night. Um, a young lady was pulling out of the driveway of her um, boyfriend's house, and uh, she just got about down about 30, 30 yards or so at the edge of the driveway, and. Uh, Something came out of the woods, and she hit it with her van, and she thought it was a bear at first, but it was, then it stood up and pushed itself off the van, rolled around the side of the van, and then <clears throat> she saw the thing. It wasn't a bear. It was one of those Bigfoot-type creatures, and uh, she got scared, so she backed up, pulled back into the driveway, and told um, her brother and stuff and the people that were in the house, and... Uh, so they were inspecting the dent in the van where uh, she hit the creature, and uh, she could see the handprint on a hood. And uh, as they were inspecting the hood, they seen this uh, creature standing at the edge of their yard. So one of the kids runs in, gets a thirty thirty rifle, and he shoots at the thing. And as he shot it, the thing lurched back like he he said he kind of thought he shot his shoulder off or something. Anyway, he started coming towards him, and he shot again, and it kind of lurched back again. So they all ran into the house. They got pretty scared. And um, so then they heard uh, oh, some sounds and stuff on top of their roof. So they go outside, and then they saw their two dogs were cowering in the bushes, and the other one was so frightened that it soiled itself. And uh, they did have a ladder that was laying on the ground, but now they saw that the ladder was on top of the roof. Then they saw this dark shape on top of the roof. So this kid put the ladder back on the, back on the ground, and this creature uh, grabbed an overhanging tree branch. It was actually a birch tree that swung itself from the roof, hit the ground, and took off running. And then they could hear it howling. And it sounded as if there was more than one of the creatures. It sounded like several of them that was howling. And uh, one of the kids described the huge creature as it was about seven feet tall, dark brown, hairy, and had a head almost like that of a wolf. So then they called the Wadena County Sheriff Department, 
And one of the deputies came out, and also a DNR conservation officer arrived. <clears throat> they inspected the dented van and saw the big, large handprint, or like a human handprint, except to it's very large. And uh, so then the, I think the sheriff deputy, he kind of wiped it off. And one of the kids says, what'd you do that for? He got kind of mad about it. So anyway, so they went, showed him where uh, that young lady hit the thing. And they were, they were looking on the gravel side of the road. And they could see these huge, about 15, 16-inch human-like tracks. So the DNR goes over and kicks it around and messes it up. Kid said, what did you do that for? And he got kind of mad again, you know. And uh, so anyhow, <clears throat> and they tried to, the DNR and the sheriff deputy tried to tell him that it was just probably a bear. And when the kid said, well, how in the world can a bear run on two legs and he'll leave a large handprint on a van? Anyway, we got wind of that story by the Catholic Times reporter, he came to my office and told me the story. It was a week later. So me and Bob Olson went out there and and, uh, and um, interviewed the, the family. And uh, they kind of showed us a van, and you could actually see, um, you could, I mean, there was large dents and stuff like that in front of the van, and so we inspected it, and we found reddish-brown hairs Stuffed inside the grill and stuff, we could see where the grill was busted out. And you could actually see where, like, fingerprints pushed, dented right into the van. <clears throat> and then, um, so I didn't describe the story, so they showed us around, and we had our equipment and stuff, and uh, we actually saw the bullet holes in the trees, and they were kind of high up, like seven, eight feet tall, eight feet up in the air where the bullet holes hit some trees. So we took a walk back. So they, were, they, they were able to jump tall, and huh? Yeah. <clears throat> and anyhow, so we we uh, inspected, the, walked around the back of the ground, stuff like that, by way back in the woods. But the mosquitoes were so bad, and it was hot and humid. Anyway, we did what we could, and um, wrote down a lot of stuff and uh, documented what we could. And uh, Monster Quest, one of the TV producers, got wind of that, what we were doing. So they called us and, and uh, wanted to do a recreation of it. So they're going to film it, or it's gonna, actually going to be filmed sometime, maybe this month or next month. On Outstanding. Good for you. Anyway, <clears throat> as we were doing the recreation of inspecting the van, we opened up the hood and we started digging around we started finding more hair. So they filmed that, so that was pretty awesome. <clears throat> so we put that, you know, using tweezers to put the hair in bags and stuff, so the University of Minnesota scientists are going to take a look at that. And we also uh, cut the uh, trees so we can send the trees, so they sent that along with them so they can extract the bullet to see if they can get any DNA off that if the bullet passed through the body. <clears throat> so that's pretty amazing. Um, that story there. And how? My goodness! So this thing got hit by a car, got yeah. shot, got shot uh, twice, and got shot twice, and still ran off. Yeah. Tough, cr tough critter. It's a tough animal, isn't it? Yeah, My it goodness. is. And it was about a week or so later they could hear howling again around uh, the property and stuff, and then they also found more tracks. Oh, my goodness. Well, you know now, what's really what's interesting, the, what's the, Shovel Bob, you know what's really interesting about this is that you know, <clears throat> uh, the Beast of Bray Road in Wisconsin has always been a, uh, a, a canine-type-faced uh, uh, creature, and Don was describing it that this was also a canine uh, faced or wolf faced creature so that's, that's pretty interesting isn't it 